Yo, what's crack lagging gangsters? Welcome to another Source Code Breakdown. This time, this is a triple A RPG story driven game. This game has more than 5 million downloads on the App Store. So, I'm just going to hit the play button for those of you who don't know the game. Let us just go briefly through it. And by the way, this has sound effects and all of that stuff, but I, you know, turned them off because I will be distracted by all of those sound effects and stuff if I play the game. So, we have a nice loading screen, we have a nice main menu, and basically, the game the idea of the game is that we have this little weird dude I don't know if this is a caveman or whatnot you see that the guy right here you see him so basically he is a tamer and we tame animals and then we fight evil forces over here this is the cave of the dude so let me just click here it says what or it has an exclamation mark let me see what it wants for me so yeah it wants me to watch the ads by the way for those of you guys who want to create mobile games this source code will be you know perfect and anyways let me just see here a few things that we have so over here you can purchase or upgrade various equipment so if i click here then you can as you can see upgrade this bear mace or whatever this is let me click here to upgrade yes i want to upgrade there you go i i had enough money to upgrade can i upgrade again Yes, I can. There you go. So, can I have something else? I need 50 bones to buy this, but I have zero bones. Okay, so we need to search for some bones. Next, let me just go see what we have over here before we start digging into everything so that you can see basically what you have or this the, the scope of this source code. So, attack speed and speed is increased but for 10 minutes, okay? So, if I watch as okay... I don't want to do that right now. I don't think we can. So over here, you can exchange your local items for gold. There you go. Over here, you can get or level up hero animals. So basically, as you can see here, we can level up the animals that we have. And look at how many animals can we have. These are the animals that we are going to tame. And the last but not least, actually, we have two more. So you can mount or level up unique animals. Let me just see here what we have for unique animals so yeah, Bomba, Golden, whatever, but they are, you know, locked, so we cannot do anything. We You need to play the game, basically, so you can just, you know, get this game to play it, because it's really, really interesting. And over here, I think, is the shop you can buy or sell animals. Yeah, anyways, let's go outside and see what we can do outside. So we have levels, as you can see here. We are in our cave. We have the Windland, the Swamp, the Empty Draco, whatever that is, but I don't know. Anyways, going here is... Or going outside the cave is basically where we do, you know, the tasks. And you can go here, click on the task, and we exit the cave. Next, we can hunt the, hunt the mouse, the mice, whatever, and tame them. So these are, or this is the quest that we need to do. By the way, if you take a look at this game and you see everything what's here. So we can tame the animals we have here, you know, the whatever this is let me just see what this here is okay so yeah this is a map and we can teleport which is interesting and this is basically where we are this is what we unlocked so we cannot see more than that and these are the mice or mouses that we can okay look at that so this is how we basically you know tame them we kill them we destroy them come over here you little bastard oh actually this one is on my side yeah there you go so yeah we can get all of these as well so look at that so it's not like only you know one that we can have let me just go here now i have more and let's try to tame these more and there you go now i'm going to go in the source code but before i do that what i the druid has been killed okay i cannot go in the source code because i have been killed but what i wanted to ask you is the following as you can see this is a story driven this is a crazy game it has a lot of features how many levels do you think this game has and i'm going to go here in the scenes and you're going to be surprised look at this so we have only one two three four five and six scenes i'm showing this or talking about this for one reason and that is i see a lot of people you know creating a gazillion levels when they are creating their game so that's one of the way you can do it but if you have you know thousands of levels it's not the way to go so you need a way to have smaller amount of scenes in your game and basically what you can do is same as what i did so okay exit everything same as what i did which is create prefabs create levels out of prefabs and then spawn those prefabs inside the game so anyways what i want to do is i want to go here in the scene okay so they are going to kill me basically 
for whatever reason. Come on, look at these mices or whatever. These mouse again, they killed me. I'm gonna go here inside of the scene or actually in the hierarchy and I want to take a look at the source code for the player. So here is my player object. I'm going to press F and it's going to go right where he is. As you can see, everything that you see here, so these things, these are UI. So everything around him is UI. It's not like, you know, whatever. It's not generated from the script or yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to go here and select the player object, which is this bad boy again over here. And then I'm going to go here in the player object script. So this is the script of the player. Let me just go here. And by the way, these are all the scripts. Let me just go inside of the script. Says script, the scripts folder. These are the scripts that we have for the game, as you can see. So we have add money UI, achieve UI. We have, you know, animal shop UI, yada, yada, yada. You, you get the point. So over here, you have all the scripts that are used to create this game. So you can, you know, go through all of them. And when I say go through all of them, you can get the source code inside of Lazy Gay then, by the way. Link is down below. So from here, you can inspect and see how the player is created. So over here, we have a lot of functions that are going to add the money to the player. Is he stunned by the attack? Can we resurrect him? Heal him? Is necro? Is boss damage? Yada, yada, yada. Going back over here in the awake, it just setting the instance to the player, which is interesting. So they are using an instance to, or in this project, it's used, the player object is used as an instance, probably because we want to access all of the features, the public ones, and for it goes the same for the functions and the variables. So public override void init. So unique ID over here. Let me see what is happening. User data, yada, 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 set torch. So yeah, basically this is how these scripts communicate between each other. Say manager instance play the, and this is by the way, the name of the sound effect that's gonna be played. So yeah, so moving forward, over here, set animal attack, so owner unit. And let me just see for what is this use over here. Okay, getting the attack damage from the child unit. Over here, child unit is permanent. Damaging, okay. Attack coroutine, so this is basically the coroutine that's being used to attack on attack. So I, I assume this on attack is basically when the button is pressed. So when we press the button, this one is going to be called. And from there, then we are going to, as you can see also here, effect manager, spawning the stun attack and all of that stuff. So init game in play over here is the movement for the player. There you go. This is for all of you guys who were wondering how are we moving? Well, this is how we're moving. So we're using the joystick, set joystick, event or stick joystick event and then from here we have the delegate so from there we use the move and let me just see here move and go to implementation so it is inside of the necro player object which is basically probably a script that is in the hierarchy so it's basically inheriting each other because here we have the player object who inherits short unit object so you can right click and this is a shortcut if you didn't know you can right click and you can go here to declaration it will take you to that game or to that script and from there we can see everything that's implemented here because the player object is the player object is inheriting from this from this class and this class and let me just move it back so it goes here and this class in, in is inheriting owner unit object. Let's go to the declaration and see what we have there and why isn't it moving? There you go. And then from here we have the unit. So go to declaration one more time and there you go. So unit object is our base class or generic base class, which has a lot of features that we are going to use in the player and across the hierarchy of these classes. And one thing that you can study while experimenting or actually while studying this source code, one thing that you can learn is using inheritance to create a structure or a hierarchy of classes that you can then use every class 
fulfills or how can I say every every class fills the whole of the other class so the unit object has all the basic and general data or general structure that every single one of these classes is going to use so from here as you can see that we have the init function that we are using here in the player to initialize the player but one thing that we're doing in the player is we are overriding and we have declared that by virtual which means we can override all of this here and we can implement our own but still it's the common behavior so what's important here is that we have a common behavior inside of this inside of these classes now I did not play this game for that long to see if we have different characters but I don't believe that we do I think we only have one character from here let me just see so okay yeah yeah okay okay we can basically buy everything with gold so we can go here which is interesting and we can <laughs> we can do one thing we can go and we can hack the game and give here unlimited amounts of gold and there you go <laughs> yep uh, that's me cheating in games so anyways going back here in the source code and we are still by the way this is still talking about the player's source code so there is a lot of things going on here now if you want to for example see how or for what certain functions are used. For example, I can go here in the player object and I can hold command F, which is on Mac and control F on Windows. And I can simply type attack and it is going to find me the attack function. So is double attack, attack. Actually, we have a lot of attacks here. So let me just see void, okay. So void is not gonna do it. Let me just go here and we have virtual let me just find the attack functionality and see if i can because we do have a lot of things with attack here so we have the druid increase attack damage unit increase mem this mem i think is for mammoth which is one of the animals that you can basically tame and you can you know obtain inside of the game so let's see here set attack and override here it is we have the attack coroutine and here we have on attack okay so yeah let me just go here and see if we can go to implementation find references find references is basically or it will find where this function is being used in all other classes so for example let me just see if i can do it for this one over here i can go find references yeah there you go so now it has found a reference where this attack is used in other in other classes so that's another way how you can quickly i hate it when it let me just see if this search if these search results are gonna go yeah yeah i hate it when this happens there you go so yeah, this is another way how you can search for things quickly inside of a project because why am I doing this? Why am I doing these series where I break down source codes? Of course, this is a huge, this is a, an enormous project. I cannot break down every single thing. As you can see, what we just went through briefly, this is just briefly, is just the unit object, which is essentially one part of the class hierarchy for the player movement so when you get a job when you start working in a company this is you know the code that you're going to look at of course depending on the company the code might be different and you know the coding standards and all of that stuff yada 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 but it's important for you to know how to open a project how to go through it how to see what is happening especially in this case you don't have any comments anywhere so you don't have you can assume from functions what they are doing so die reward basically when he dies this is the reward that he will get and you can see over here how we are getting that reward and from there from user data add goal this is where so user data manager i believe is where all the so go to declaration this is where all the data is stored so we have the gold the jewel the material the you know whatever animal count and you can see i did not know that but just by inspecting the code i saw here that we are using add gold function from the user data's instance which immediately made me think this is where we store the user data
So that's why it is important that you know to go through the source code, to go through, ramage it basically, open it, tear it apart, and then you will, you know, see, learn, whatever, how to do things. Now, what I wanted to do is let's go here and see if I can find these mice again, but this time I'm going to be smart and pause the game because I want to check out their classes that are attached on them. And I think because I did this over here that I am not able to find them right now. But anyways, yeah, let's go and explore what we have. So you can see, okay, there you go. So I'm going to pause here and scene and find my player. So from here, player ob object, there you go. And look at the level, how the level is created. So this is basically the levels. So you can go through it. I don't have, you know... I didn't plan to spend that much time going through the level, how everything is created, because again, you can access the source code, you can get it on Lazy Game Dev, and you can do whatever you want to do with it. So from here, I am going to select these mice. So this one, there you go. So we have short unit object and AI unit object, and they're basically created as, you know, they are created as prefabs, I assume, but they have weird names. Anyways, it's not important that they have weird names. Let me just make sure this is the mouse that I am. So Druid image, not this one, game mouse default. Yep, this is the mouse. So selecting the mouse, here we can inspect the, we can inspect the scripts that are attached on them. Here the depth object, I did not, I did not inspect this, but I believe that this depth is going to make sure if we see if we see the game object or not, depending on how far he is from the camera. So he might be rendered on the screen if he is close to the player, or he might not be rendered on the screen if he is not close to the player. So this is how I, or what I think this class is going to do. Over here, AI unit object. This is what I am interested in. I wanna see the AI and how the AI is created. So from here, again, I. I'm not gonna go through every single line, okay? This is this, that, this, that. And I cannot edit anything here because I'm in the play mode. And if I edit anything, I will see all the errors and warnings telling me, oh, you edited, blah, 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 you get the point. So essentially, this is the AI class that is powering the mouse. So from here, you can go, you can inspect, you can see one thing that I saw that is interesting is that we are using the same, as I said, this is the base. So short unit object, let me just go from here. There you go. Short unit object is one of the classes in the hierarchy from the player object. So the player object, if you go here at the top, is inheriting short unit object, which means over here, short unit object can work on its own and it is attached on the mouse. So that means that AI unit object in combination with the short unit object is working with the is working so these two classes are working together to create the AI for the mouse now I still did not find any other enemy over here as you can see so we are just finding these fighting these mices or mouses or whatever so I did not encounter you know mammoths crocodiles and yes you have all of these you know crazy weird enemies that you can you know attack that you can tame and yada 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 but again that's up to you you can go through the code and you can inspect it on your own one thing that we have here this action this is basically a delegate so we can use this as a delegate and events but this is from the system so we know and if you watched my videos about delegation so i have a video about delegation you can check that out one of the ways how we can do it is using these actions so this unit, if it's equal to null, if this unit is life, if we don't have life, then return, nothing's gonna happen. AI unit, AI state, AI state, current AI state. Okay, so let me just check what this current AI state is doing. So from here, AI state, basically I believe this is, so I'm going to go to the declaration and here it is. As I said, just wanted to say, I believe this is an enumerator. So we're, so we're using the state pattern inside of here. 
enemy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not spell enemy. I don't know what's enemy. But anyways, the state pattern is used. So one of the design patterns that is, you know, that you can use to make your life easier when it comes to creating games to control the to control the AI. So let's go here and see what we have. So the current is none. So when we clear, it's none. So AI proc AI or here enemy. I'm not sure what enemy is. Enemy back, back probably going backwards. Home probably going home. But of course you can check that. So let me just go here and see that. So current state. So if AI state is not equal to enemy, and if state is not equal to home, then AI state is equal to back, and then we are calling here enemy back to AI proc else, start home, and there you go. So let me just go here. I believe the movement is happening inside of the start unit object. This is where the movement I believe is happening and which, so attack or routine, okay. We're using the rigid body, is move attack, my skill, skill count attack. There you go. So basically the short unit has the attack functionality which is interesting. So this class, and this is a really good example how you can use a specific class spore, spore for a specific purpose, which is what I preach, which is what Unity preaches, which is what, you know, the pros do when they create their game. So one class should do one task. And this is how you should think. Of course, don't think that every, you know, every source code that you find out there, every game, it doesn't matter how good it is, triple A, whatever, don't think that they all follow these because sometimes you need to break the rules, you know, and you need to learn how and when to break the, the rules. But that's another topic. So I'm going to go here in the owner unit object and looking where the movement is. So still didn't find the movement damage, set rage, update, I believe, okay. So there you go. So is move, this rigid body velocity is greater. It's ghost, return, else, vector, target, transform, position, vector, magnitude, move, self. There you go. This is where the movement is happening. So the movement is happening in the owner unit object, which the short unit object is inheriting. And in the case of the player, the player object is inheriting the short unit object, which is this one. So it, this function or this class gives the player the attack functionality. And this right here, the owner unit object gives him the movement ability. And here unit object, I'm not sure what it does. So here we have the die functionality. Okay, so the reward we get after we die, interesting get owner unit, set animation state. So here we can change animations as well. So basically the hierarchy of these classes is in the first one, we control the death. So when we die, we control the animations. We give, you know, rewards after death happens. Over here, we control the movement and over here, we control the attacks. I assume for the player that he has combined. So inside of this class, everything that, you know, all three of these functionalities are combined and we control them from this one single class, which is a good structure, by the way. So this is a good structure. Maybe some things can be cleared and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. I'm not gonna go into that. But over here, AI unit. So AI unit is inheriting mono behavior. That's okay. But this one over here, this one allows us the attack and this one allows us the movement. So yeah. That's basically it. This is how the enemies function as well. And this is, again, a really cool example of how you can use the same classes to control the player and to control the enemies. So these classes on their own are working as an AI for the enemy, but in combination with this one, they are working as a controller for the player. Now I'm going to go here back inside of the script and see if I can find some other. So we have the zombie bomb bug, zombie boss object. Okay, I'm going to open this one because I believe this is the boss class for the boss zombie of course as i said i cannot play the game you see it takes a lot of time probably to you know reach what everyone reach let me just go here can i do this okay there you go okay are all quests cleared what do i do after i clear the quest by the way you can take a look at the you can take a look at the map that you see 
what is this? Can I like attack them from, you know, okay, I can attack them basically and not get close to them. But I still need to be careful. Because whatever these mouses or mice or whatever are eating, it's making them, you know, it's making them mutate or whatever. So going back here, okay, sale. This is an interesting feature for those of you guys who want to implement, who want to create mobile games. So here you have, you know, a really cool UI as well that you can take a look at. Now, as I said, I did not play this game for that long to know how everything functions. So over here, English, yeah, the, I want English. And tame one rabbit, buy mouse and sell mouse. Okay. So am I going to cheat again? Yes, of course I'm going to cheat. I'm going to click here, all quests cleared. Can, can I clear the quests? No, I can watch ads. No, I'm going to clear it like this. Apparently I cannot, I need to watch the ads. But yeah, another structure that's really cool, as you can see, it's not, it's not how can I say, aggressive in terms of forcing you to do all of these things. You don't have to do it. You can go and play the game, which is the you know original thing that you wanted to do. So we want now, or we need to go and find us a rabbit. Hopefully this not is, is not some mutating rabbit that's gonna, you know, kill us and destroy us and all of that stuff. But in essence, let me just go here. Can I go here and, and, and up? No, this is as far as I can go. So this is as far as I can go. And this is for this level, I assume. And let me just go here and see. Okay, this is nice. So this right here, this bag is showing us the items that we currently have. So it's not like, you know, that we can stuff things inside. Okay, so I don't know what's up with the mouses in inside of this game. But, you know, they need to chill. Calm down, mousey, mousey, mousey. Hopefully, let me just see here. Okay, this is how much of the level I have discovered. So when you click on the loop icon on the map over there, by the way, you can also reuse the map functionality to create the map for yourself. Okay, interesting things are happening here. So this game has really a lot of features, you know, basically, as I said, it's a story driven game. It has a lot of things inside it. What is this? You know, what the hell is this? Okay, let's watch ads. But yeah, I cannot do that in, in, in the in the editor. Okay, there is the mouse. Or actually the there is the dude, what the hell? There is the bunny. Don't tell me that these bunnies. Yeah. Apparently the bunnies can attack me and they almost kill me and they actually killed me. The druid has been killed. I should have definitely went and disable the health for the druid, like they cannot deal any damage to the druid. And let me just see if I can find and how can we do that. So over here, player. Okay, health. Max HP, here it is, unit increase, max HP, attack damage. Unit increase HP. I think one of these, so decrease, ma'am, die, double attack, is money, heal. Okay. I I mean, I don't want to go through all of that. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time to get to know a new project. So you need to go through it. You need to change things. You need to see, okay, here is the damage. So base damage, unit, unit HP minus equals damage. This is basically what we need to do. So I'm assuming, and let me just see if I am correct. So I'm going to turn off the game and let's go here just for a moment. And I'm going to turn this off. So I have commented this out and, or basically I'm not gonna comment it out. I'm simply going to go here and say return, which is not going to do anything. So it's not going to touch anything from here and it's not going to allow the player to get or be dealt with any damage. So let's check that out and see if that's actually the case. So I'm going to hit the play button again. Let's go inside of the game. I'm really cu curious, curious, curious to see what's gonna happen. So let's go here in the Windland and let's find somebody and see if they can, you know, try. Now they can try to deal damage. And this is how you create cheats in your game. 
Look at that, my man. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to pick this up. Now they cannot do anything. So now I am prepared to destroy this game. Look at that. <laughs> That's how you play games, my fellow people. That's how you play games. But yeah, anyways, you get the point. So you saw how we can go through the source code, the things that we can learn. I'm going to remove this from here because now, you know, I know where it is. It's in the damage function and unit HP is basically, so we can go from here and locate unit unit HP, which is set by the, so instance set HP, it's set from here. This is the maximum and there you go. So the more variables you get to know, the more functions you also get to know, the more you know the project, the more you can see what is happening inside of this project and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, as I said, I cannot do too much for a YouTube video when it comes to break breaking down the source code. If, however, you are in lazy game dev on the ultra tier, which you can, you know, get link is down below. I would break down the source code basically line by line. I will go through everything. I will I will even create comments here so that you can then download the project and see, okay, this is doing this, that's doing that. And you can reuse this stuff in your own game. So you can reuse this to create your own games. You can build portfolios from this, whatever you want to do. I do not care, okay? I do not care. That's why I built Lazy Game Dev and that's why you have these amazing source codes like this one, which again has 5 million downloads currently and it has more but you saw it's a really cool game so yeah if you want this source code link is down below and I will see for the next video which source code I will break down because I have a lot of source code especially from really advanced games but yeah that will be it and I will see you guys in the next video